Hey, so we're looking at Tuesday, December 11th. Uh, the video might look a little bit different because we're trying it on my phone because I don't have my normal recorder because I sent it with the We The People Kids to try something different. So you have like a wider view. It's like all cray cray. Uh, and this is the advanced class, not the regular class in case you're trying to be confused up there because we're talking about advancing things in here. Quiz tomorrow covers up through chapter 8. Book report also due tomorrow. Covers the entire book. Nine week assessment coming up on Thursday. Um, if you went to the school musical, it does get us house points. So if you're absent and home dead, come make sure you'll be tomorrow. If you were in the musical, you already got points for that. It's just kids who bought tickets. Woo! And then I'm picking this up from you in a week from today. So next Tuesday, you're going to turn in your notebook. Make sure you've done all the dates and titles. Make sure you've done the bell works. If you want to turn it in this Friday, you may get you five extra credit points, but only if it's perfect. If you turn it in early and there's any mistakes, I get to charge you an extra five points for making poor choices. And then once again, book report, make sure you turn it in. If everyone has a turn in, we'll get the class candy. And then our checkpoints, we're gonna be talking about chapter six and seven in just a moment. And then tomorrow, the quiz up through chapter eight. Let's see, we can skip Gone the Wind. That part. Let's do, ooh, with the sunrisey poem that Pony Boy said. What was our meaning that we were supposed to get from the poemy thing? Coons? Nothing good lasts forever. Nice done. So what is the uplifting, happy thing from it? Mm -hmm. uh, is that fair? There is a good uplifting thing, not just the depressing that everything dies, <laughs> but we try to find the happy part. Saganish? Um, like, enjoy what you have. There you go. So the idea that, yeah, everything is going to disappear, but enjoy it while you have it. Don't just focus on the negative. Try to focus on the happy. And the very end, that last line says nothing gold can stay. What is it gold is a metaphor for? Good things. Happiness. Why you guys gotta shout it out? I got this thing's called hands. Yeah. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? Uh, so the fact that works with the happiness, the gold, the good things in life, and stuff like that. Hawaiian. Can you show this to your sixth period class? No. Yeah. Um, I mean, I will, but not until April when they read the book. Oh, it's lame. Until they read the book in Every kid reads The Outsiders because it's a great book. Um, they just don't read theirs till later in the year. Are we gonna read I trust book? you guys with it now because your brains are a little stronger Someone in than that theirs. Class needs later on, not let me tell them what happened. Now. now, given some of your brains aren't there because like you're talking while I am, and so you're making those poor choices. But you know, <laughs> to each kid, we can attack you as seem fit. Ice Ray. Are we going to read that was then? This is now yeah. like the regular kids. Nope, time? they get to read that one. You guys get different books. It's almost like you're in different. What classes. book are we gonna get so I can read it for the next book report? You're gonna get a book called Hey, look at this next question. So <laughs> when they're okay, up okay, there and they're hanging out. And so, I'm in this recording third period. Uh, so when they're up there hanging out at the church, yeah, that's called an attack. Good job. I'm glad you guys picked up on it. Oh, nice. insulted if you didn't. Who comes find them while they're there? Dally. 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 How does Dally know they're there? He he told them them. Them to nice. Go right. He's the one that sent them there. And then when they go out to Dairy Queen and they're hanging out, uh, Johnny makes brother. a big decision. Oh, wait till so I get them talking. <laughs> To turn himself in. Why does he decide to turn himself in? Because he's, 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 he's a bad man. He's a bad man. He wants Pony to be able to see his family. Big part of it is wants Pony Boy to be able to see his family, and the other part is he wants to finally go home and not have to be on the run forever. So it's a little bit of both. Not just him thinking about himself, but also thinking about Pony Boy and worried about the fact that Pony Boy needs to see his family. He realizes Pony Boy is never going to ditch him because Pony Boy is just that too good of a friend. He's like, you know what, as long as I'm on the run, you're going to stay with me. And we've already found out that apparently your brother's like you. You have a family that cares. I'm like, my horrible parents. So he says, we should turn ourselves in. When they get back to the church, what do they find out? There's a fire. It's on fire. It's on fire. The roof, the roof. The and roof kids are in fire. there. Uh, and not only is it on fire, but there's other people there. Sure And that's where there's a whole bunch of children there. Uh, with the part with all the children that are there, one, um, it's my favorite scene in the whole book. We're going to talk about that here. Oh, and Obviously. we're going to get to my favorite scene in the whole book, which we're going to talk about in a moment, too. And as a teacher, I'm not sure who takes a field trip of kids to an abandoned church on a hill. And you're like, who wants to go see an old decrepit building? And the kid's like, we do. Uh, but that's they take all the kids up there, and it turns out that the place is on fire. They have a suspicion about why it's on fire and why they suspicion it. The cigarettes. Either the fact that it's a cigarette burning, or they might have left matches or something like that. The kids said it. Whatever reason they're thinking, it's probably on fire because of them. I'm going to jump to that scene real quick because it introduces my favorite character in the entire book. Jerry, Jerry the teacher. 
Um, and I think Jerry the teacher is the bomb. So it starts at the bottom of page 90, and I'm going to explain to you why he is the best teacher and character ever in a book. This is when they go running up. He says, I tap the nearest grown-up. What's going on? Well, we don't know for sure, the man said with a good-natured grin. We were having a school picnic up here, and the first thing we knew, the place was burning up. Thank goodness this is a wet season, and the old thing's worthless anyway. Then, to the kids, he shouted, Stand back, children! The firemen will be coming soon! I bet we started it, I said to Johnny. We must have dropped a lighted cigarette or something. About that time, a lady came running up. Jerry, some of the kids are missing! Ah, they're probably around here somewhere. <laughs> you can't tell with all this excitement where they might be. No, she shook her head. They've been missing for at least a half an hour. I thought they were climbing the hill. And then we all froze. Best teacher ever. <laughs> so he takes a group of kids out to a hill with a building that catches on fire. And another teacher comes up and goes, hey, you see that large burning building? We can't find some of the children. His response, nah, we got the important ones. And I'm like, oh, hashtag teacher goals. That guy is the greatest. I would Caleb. Um, why does Jerry sound like a redneck? Because that's how I made his voice sound. Okay. Uh, so we have the fact that Jerry, oh, then once we find out there's small chillins inside the building, who decides to go in? Johnny and Penny. Why does the best teacher ever not go in? Because, because it's super mean. This becomes one of my next favorite scenes, and this doesn't actually happen, it's my imagination. For those of you who've seen uh, Winnie the Pooh, I just imagine like when Winnie the Pooh gets stuck trying to go into the tree, his little feet are like left kicking out to the side. That's what I imagine with Jerry, he's like, <laughs> and, like stuck in there like inside the burning house and his little feet are kicking out. Um, then, now to my favorite scene, after my favorite character, what is it Johnny and Ponyboy decide to do with the kids? Throw the kids out the window. Throw them out Save the window. them by Toss throwing them out a window. window. Wow. Let me tell you, Why is that, is that how many hard? kids I would save if that's what was required. If they said to save these children, you have to huck them out a window, I was like, that's my job. You give me all the babies you want and all the windows that exist, and I'm like, save, save, save. I'd be saving kids left and right. Oh, just. I just pictured the fact that they're throwing babies out windows, and they're like, you're a hero, and you're like, yes, I am. Uh, and then, to finish out my favorite scene, uh, I picture in my head, because when they're saving the kids, how does one of the kids react to being saved? Happy. Bites them. Bites onto oh, him. Uh, and so, I imagine, once again, as he's grabbing a kid to throw them out the window, the kid bites onto him like a little piranha, and he has a kid like dangling in his hand. And I just imagine him like, ow, ow, like dancing and shaking. The kid's like flapping in the wind back and forth. And he pulls the kid off like, ow, and like, save, and then throws him out the window. But that might not be exactly how it happened, but that was how my imagination kicked in and made it best scene in a book someone. ever. Jesse? There's a word for throwing someone out the window. It's defenestrating. You are correct. One of my favorite you. words, too. To, trust me, I try to defenestrate kids in here, but they don't like going through that window because I have to throw them really hard to get them through there. But, you know, there's no window. Kid. Oh, I just I'm ready. Right there. Uh, right there. Uh, window. I'm ready. That's how you get the elephant in the tree. <laughs> Those don't just grow in rooms. That's ridiculous. Uh, and so we got the fact that we giant burning room. church. Uh, which, by the way, is surprising. If you actually Google burning church, a lot of pictures come up and it's kind of scary. Uh, so I had my choice of burning church pictures. That's funny. Uh, things you learn. Uh, and then not all the characters uh, get to escape from burning church because once something happens to one of the characters, which is... John. What happens to Johnny? He dies. The thing falls on him as he throws Pony out. And this is one of those good news, bad news scenes. Because it talks about one of the, these are the rafters. This is when the church is on fire. And the whole top of it starts to fall in. One of the rafters falls, I mean, Pony Boy gets out. Ooh, another favorite scene. Whoa. Pony Boy manages to get out of the church, but he's on fire. So which character helps him? Dally. How does Dally help him when he's on fire? He him on the back. Says technically he punched him in the back because that was my favorite. He's like, you're on fire! Well, I'm a savior! And he drops him straight to the ground. Once again, do you know how many kids I would save? They're like, to save this kid, you have to punch. Done! Well, you can him left and right. Now, the problem is, 
Pony Boy gets out and that big jacket saves him because he gets punched. But then Johnny, and here becomes a good news, bad news kind of situation where the thing falls on him, which is on fire, so it burns his body, which gives you a whole bunch of really bad third degree burns, which are incredibly painful. Bad news. Good news is Johnny doesn't feel it. Not because he's dead. But what's the good news for Johnny? His back is broken. His back is broken. Oh. Which means you have no feeling in your body. So it's like, hey, bad news, your whole body's burnt up like a crispy little thick of raisin. And because of that, you're going to be in pain forever. Except, <laughs> winning, you can't feel anything because your spine's broken. And he's like, oh, I'd clap my hands, but I can't. Uh, so, sorry, cripple joke. How uh, are you going to make that whole today? There, it's that whole yay and then not so yay back and forth. Joey! Um, later on in like chapter 7 or 8, um, Dally says that he accidentally um, broke, uh, he thought that he accidentally uh, broke Pony Boy's neck. Once yeah, when he did that. Once again, saving people is such a rough job. One, I'm willing to step up and do any time one of you needs saved. It's like when you get someone to set myself up and you really yeah. yeah. someone. Now, I'm going to jump fast forward through a big part of it because they get to the hospital, they meet the brothers, things are all happy, they're like high-fiving each other in hugs and emotions. Pfft, skip that part. I'm going to go to, there's a scene that gets confusing because of how it's worded. When they talk about Soda Pop's girlfriend, which is on page 111. So I'm going to read that scene to you real quick to see if you can figure out what they're referring to. This is after they've gotten back and they're saying, hey, oh, the rumble is coming up. And the rumble is the big fight between what two sides? Socias and greasers. The idea being, if the socias win, what has to happen? Greasers stop. Have to leave. If the socias win, what happens? Things go on like they have. Correct. The gre then they get to keep on hunting them whenever they want. If the greasers win, what happens? Socias leave them alone. And that's where they say, so socias, you can no longer hunt us like wild animals. So it goes back and forth. <laughs> Let's get so they're saying, hey, we're going to have a party prior to that. Let's go with page 111. Um, can I still write my depressing crap? You keep on writing depressing stuff. That Yay! Like Are you going to take Sandy to the party? I, I asked, now. just to be saying something. Instant silence. I looked around. Uh, what's the deal? Soda Pop was staring at his feet, but his ears were reddening. No, she went to live with her grandmother in Florida. What? How come? Look, Steve said, surprisingly angry. Does he have to draw you a picture? It was either that or get married. And her parents almost hit the roof at the idea of her marrying a 16-year-old kid. 17, Soda said softly. I'll be, I'll be 17 in a couple of weeks. Uh, oh. Oh. I said, embarrassed. Soda was no innocent. I'd been in on bull sessions, and his bragging was as loud as anyone's, but never about Sandy. Not ever about Sandy. So, Sandy had to leave, and she moved down to Florida with her grandparents. There's a reason why she had to leave. It is subtle, but it's there. Did you know why? Because if not, to... we're going to have a fun, awkward conversation in just oh, a moment. No. Oh, no. I kind of want that because I'm really bored. <laughs> Coots? Uh, is it because they didn't want her to get married? Close. Why did she have to get married? What? Her parents gave her a choice. She made a decision. Oh. Because of that <laughs> choice she oh, made. she chose. Shaped her world tomorrow. Well, that changes things. Yeah. The choices yeah. you make today. The choices today. you make today <laughs> shape your world in nine months. If that helps you a little bit. Uh, no! So, yes. we're getting there. So between uh, Sandy and Soda Pop, they were friendly. Oh, no! <laughs> and so because of that I'm done with friendliness, I'm done now, with in nine months, they're going to have a new friend. <laughs> Wait, whoa, 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 because of that, her parents gave her a choice. You either have to get married to the friend, or you have to move away until new small friend comes into the world. And then new small friend will either go find a new family, or you get to raise your new small friend. But the problem is, marriage was not an option because her friend was only 16-year-old and a high school dropout. And apparently. 
parents frown on that. Yeah. <laughs> parents. So they made it be the other option. So that's what the whole hinting thing, and that's why the whole soda pop and sandy thing happened from there. So well, that's, that's fun. what occurred. I never would have guessed that. I was right. figuring. I thought they were just I mad because, because like, they were I mean, like, they were mad. <laughs> that's correct. I thought, I thought it was because he was a... Okay. Yeah. I mean, the bad influence and they didn't And with that uplifting thought, we will let you go on with the world. Quiz tomorrow. Toodles. <laughs>